Hi guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and today I finally get my hands on the GTX 1070 Founders Edition. Now this has probably been the uh, craziest week that I've done in a long time so if you've not seen any other of the reviews that I've done on the channel I've already done the MSI GTX 1080 and that's the MSI GTX 1080 Gaming X and then the Asus GTX 1080 Strix. So it's been an incredibly busy week, but yesterday at three o'clock in the afternoon, Nvidia uh, um, delivered me the 1070. Now, um, I really wanted to try and pump this out as quick as I possibly ca could. So we've got the testing done, the written version's on the website, ready to go live, and I wanted to make you a quick video. So it may be not up to my um, normal standards, but I'm going to try and whittle through it as quick as I possibly can do. So that I can get my head down over the weekend. Enough of the background story though. Price, 1070. Everyone has been wondering how much it's gonna be and then how um, uh, good it's going to perform because it does look exactly the same, especially the uh, Founders Edition, it looks exactly the same. So prices I've been given by Nvidia are 399 pounds um, for the uh, Founders Edition and then you're looking at 429 and maybe a little bit more depending on the vendor for the vendor ones. Now there's a lot of debate with the prices and I have said in the past that I could do an entire video based on that. Uh, and I think the way that you've got to look at it is kind of forget the name, look at the performance. Because if you focus on the, um, the fact it's got the 70 there, you instantly compare it to the uh, 970, obviously, but the 970 was cheaper. It's almost like the, uh, the naming scheme has kind of leapt up because the 1070 is coming in around 980 money, but the uh, 1080 came in around 980 Thai money. Now, uh, at the end, what I will do is I will talk to you about the performance versus the cost, and we'll see if you can make your own mind up with it around that. So under the box, under the nitty gritty, uh, is there any difference? Now, when you look at the PCBs, there are a couple of tiny minor differences. You can see that there's a choke left, a, a, a few MOSFETs, and then uh, there's a capacitor right out on the far side. The 1070 obviously doesn't need as much power because uh, if we bring the graph up, there's a, uh, essentially you've got one graphics processing cluster less, you've got five streaming multiprocessors less, it's got uh, 640 less CUDA cores and 40 less texture units. Now the other thing to remember with the two cards is the 1080 does have eight gigabyte of RAM, but it's GDDR5X. The 1070 still has eight gigabyte of VRAM, but it's only the old GDDR5 that you would have been used to uh, with the previous generation of cards. You can also look at the total memory bandwidth and it, um, it drops from 320 gigabits a second with the 1080 down to 256 gigabits a second with the 1070. So there's your um, kind of mumbo jumbo, uh, specifications, all that type of stuff. Now what I'm going to do is I'm gonna jump straight into um, some performance testing and then what I will do is I'm going to talk to you about uh, power efficiency or power draw at the end because I'd actually really like to get the performance out of the way first and you'll see why in a little bit. So look in the graph when it appears, ta -da! And then you've got the 1070 in the graph there. You can see above it, GTX um, 980 Ti Gaming. Um, uh, and that was by Gigabyte. And to be honest with you, the, 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 the old G1, because I've not tested the new one yet, I am hoping to get one. But you can see in the, on the shelf, there isn't a Gigabyte one yet. And I don't think any have been sent out. <coughs> but it was in the graph. It, was quite, it had quite a hefty overclock on it. When you look underneath, and this is 3D um, Mark Firestrike Ultimate, and it's the um, 4K version. If you look below it, though, you can actually see the reference GTX 980 Ti, but also the Titan X is in there as well. So we move on to the uh, next one. I chucked the 3D Mark 11 in because we've been running this for forever and a day, so it gives us a good old chance to have a look. And you can see the uh, 1070 there, and then the Titan X is just above, and then the 980 Ti is just below and benchmarks are pretty much like this they're, it, they're, they're almost and around about the same kind of um, level so when Nvidia was saying before and people were like no way 
uh, is the Titan X um, going to be the, oh sorry, is the 1070 going to be anywhere near the um, Titan X? It pretty much was, but when you think about it, the uh, w with the uh, Titans and stuff, it's the 980 tie I would say to concentrate on more than anything because that's where the driver implementations and um, uh, all the work would have gone in on because that was their gaming card. That was like the big top end focus. The Titan X, um, even the original Titan was ended up getting beaten by the 780 tie. So it's not unsurprising to me. Now, when we come into the games, one thing I can say is we've got all of the benchmarks and games on the website. We've got 11 games that we're running on the website now. We are running some of those games, uh, the ones that we can in DirectX 11 and DirectX 12. And we're doing 1080, 1440 and 4K in all of the um, results that we do now. So we do an awful lot of testing on these to try and strip it down. So don't just listen to me whizzing through this, trying to give you a quick rundown. Please click the link either underneath or on the card and go and have a look on the website because there's so much more information there. And if I did try and talk you through all of it, literally a quick video would be an hour long. I know some people out there would like that, but let's face it, some people haven't got very, very, com very comfortable chairs and they want quicker videos. So Tomb Raider, this is the original one. We are doing Rise of the Tomb Raider in DX11 and DX12 on the website. But you can see the Founders Edition there, and the ones that I'm going to pick out, really, are the Titan X and the 980 tyre below. The 980 tyres that are above are the either the ones that I've manually overclocked or the ones that I had... Um, uh, all, all the ones that came with a big hefty overclock at the start. Then when we move on to the Ashes of Singularity, you can see um, uh, this is a very small graph and this is one of the new games that we're running, so we've only really got the 1080s in there. So it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, uh, you can see that, you know, 4K here isn't, you know, massively strong. This could be the first sign of the difference between GDDR5X and GDDR5. Uh, but then when we move on, and this is the one that I really wanted to talk about, which is why I have left it till last, is the power consumption. So power consumption, amazingly, the 1070 is right down the bottom at 284 watts. And that's the entire system draw that we're talking about here, not just the, um, the card itself. And then if we were to pick out the Titan X, uh, which it's performing roughly around the same, that's 140 watts more. Don't forget you have to factor in that's 140 watts more uh, with the system in there as well. So if, if it was just the card, then, uh, it, 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 you know, this, sorry, this is just the card difference because the uh, 284 of the, uh, is included in the system. So yes, I've confused that matter. So we'll do it again. 284 is the 1070 with the system. If you were to change the card, then you would be adding another 140 watts power draw if you were to use the Titan X. If you were to use the 980 Ti, it's 160 watts more. So it's around the same kind of performance as a Titan X or the 980 Ti, and you're looking at 140 to 160 watts less power draw. Uh, so card for card, it's about, uh, it's pulling half the power but putting in the same kind of performance. So now we've spoken about power, we can talk about overclocking and boost and all that kind of stuff because I kind of hope that if we kind of take you down the path that it will uh, kind of arrange it in your head a little bit better. So if I bring the G first GPU Z up, this is just stock GPU Z opened up. What we can see is the GPU clock is 1506 megahertz says on GPU Z and on the Nvidia specs as well that the boost is 1683 megahertz. But we've got GPU Boost 3 to consider now and GPU Boost 3 basically does your overclocking for you. So these are your stock results. This is, you know, how it comes out the box. And then it boosts itself further depending on uh, the silicon lottery, uh, your um, case environment. So, you know, how cool it is, uh, power, that type of thing. So if you live in a really hot country um, or you've not got aircon on or it's like you're having the three days of British summer, it might not go as high. But if you've got the window open, cool evening, AC, then it may boost that little bit higher. So when we bring the second one up, what we can see is this is our maximum boost. And uh, when I test boost, I do it generally when I'm doing my power consumption testing as well. 
which is why you can see the little red bar at the end that I've cut off because they're, they're massive. And what I'm doing with those big red bars is actually seeing if there's any spikes because we've changed our testing a little bit more to keep an eye on these cards. Now we're starting to get used to the, um, the actual technology behind them. So we can see here 1898 megahertz uh, was our maximum boost. Now the maximum boost is brilliant and genuine, generally uh, that would have been where we would have left it in the fact that yes we know it's going that high. But what we've also heard is that you, know, you can get a little bit of fluctuations mainly based with the cooler because what GPU boost will do is it will uh, run up to um, a thermal threshold but obviously as with graphics cards will do they will warm up so after a period of time uh, they can drop back a little bit so what I've also started doing is looking at an average um, GPU core clock as well and we're eventually once we've done a few more of these few more of these reviews we're going to start an average boost graph as well but the average boost on this was actually 1900 sorry 1796 megahertz so essentially you've got, we're gonna say 1700 megahertz for the normal boost, then you get uh, 1900 for the maximum boost, but the actual average boost um, is 1800 megahertz. So 16, sorry, 17, 18, 19, pretty simple. So we've got uh, 1800 megahertz as an average boost with uh, most of it flicking up beyond that. We didn't actually get, you can't really test a minimum boost because uh, when you go for a minimum boost, when you start at the desktop screen, the car's already gone into a low power state mode anyway. So that would always be the lowest point on the GPU-Z graph. It's quite difficult. We'd have to literally log all the files and literally go plowing through all of the uh, tech stocks and stuff to be able to find out the most in a benchmark, which when I'm trying to plan and uh, get a review out in 24 hours, is obviously not going to happen. But over periods of time, we will start looking at this and going uh, more and more in depth. But the, uh, the launch schedule around these NVIDIA products is they've crammed them in so much. Um, it's, it's been an absolute nightmare for us to actually get any decent time with anything. So hopefully that will be uh, kind of interesting to you. And we'll now move, get, get rid of the graphs. There's literally piles of papers with all graphs and stuff on all around me. So really the way that we're going to look at it is this because there and i don't want to appear to be kind of leaning in any particular direction but i think the best way to look at the 1070 and the 1080 is the performance it puts on the table versus the price rather than and it is kind of an unorthodox way of doing it rather than looking at the 70 and then comparing it uh the, and focusing purely on the price with the old 970. Although I would say calling it the uh, 1070 um, and then bumping the price up 100 quid was obviously then going to, uh, you know, get a lot of people unhappy. But I'm pretty sure at some point, I think it was when the 970 come out, I think they were about 350 quid. So we've, yes, we've gone up to 399, 50 quid more, you know, you can learn to deal with it. But the thing is, is this thing is now delivering us around kind of stock 980 tie sort of titan x kind of performance or you could say absolutely super turbo comfortably eating any 980 for breakfast and i mean eating it not just fighting with it i mean walking past it and just going <laughs> for less money or absolutely slaughtering the old 980s for you know the sort of money that they've been selling for recently so if we go with the 980 tie, then you're kind of around a stock 980 tie performance, but it's using a hell of a lot less power. Um, and this is just the, uh, you know, the Nvidia one with the Nvidia card, although it is super sexy, we've been able to tell with the uh, cards that we've tested already that the cooler can make a massive difference. Reason why I've kind of led you down that avenue is the fact that I've got two of the uh, MSI GTX 1070 gaming X's by the side of me, which I'm going to be testing. So yes, I am going to be SLIing them. Maybe not next week, but most definitely at least the weekend after, week after. So when you put it into that kind of like ballpark, yes, you're around uh, uh, basic 980 Ti and Titan X performance 
for less money because you'd struggle to get a 980 tie uh, new now for 399 yes you can go out there and you can get a um you know a second hand one for even less than that but you get the, the the idea of where i'm coming on but you you have to factor in the amount of performance that you're getting per watt now um uh so you know i think in that respect you can see that it's been a big leap forward uh 4k gaming if you're an absolute you know mentalist 4k gamer then when we test our games we absolutely max them out there's nothing we don't turn to maximum don't say did you turn this on yes everything gets turned up to max now with 4k there's a lot of people out there that go oh you don't need all the aa on and you'd probably be right but you know the difference that you can get when you turn the aa off so if you're a 4k gamer and this is literally the absolute top end of the money that you can afford then you're not going to be able to turn all those bells and whistles up you can see in some of the other results on the website that you know this really i would say is a heavily comfortable a 1440p card it's not meant to be an absolute top flight card it's really the type of card where it's coming in and i would say this is kind of um uh upper mid range it's not a absolute screaming top end card do you know what i mean it's not a 980 tie replacement um it's not a uh 1080 do you know what i mean which pretty much is the 980 tie replacement but anyway so it's it's upper middle pack um, uh, and in that respect, upper middle packed, 1440p, very comfortable frame rates, very, very comfortable frame rates. Uh, and to be honest with you, this card is even going to be kind of a little bit wasted uh, with 1080p games, as you'll be able to see on the website. So to me, I would say this, I, I, we've given it gamer's choice as an award, but we've given it gamer's choice, uh, and I don't mean gamer's choice as in for it's accessible to everyone, it's a bargain basement, you know, absolute screaming end product. But I would say the 1070, whether it's the Founders Edition or whether it's going to be the uh, aftermarket cards that come later, this is going to be the one that most people aspire to because it's not absolutely you know wallet raping and uh you know it's the type of thing that you know with some careful saving selling your old card all that type of thing should be available to a, bro a much broader range of people than the 1080 which obviously is coming in now uh, around i reckon we're going to be looking uh, this is going to be around 200 pound cheaper than the equivalent 1080 which is a fairly big drop for one card notch and i think that's probably you know a bit of a blinder really which is why this really i think is the one out of the two so far that most people are going to be looking to as a possible purchase i'm actually really looking forward to seeing how well they work together in uh, sli but that is my review uh, it's probably longer than i really wanted it to be but i wanted to try and get you as much information in there as possible blinding kind of upper mid range card uh, Gamer's Choice Award, I'm still not 100% sure about that to be honest, so I would like to hear your thoughts underneath on where you thought this one should have gone, whether I should have marked it down more or whether you think it deserved a little bit more uh, 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 recognition is probably the one that I should say because I think considering the price drop and the fact it's not necessarily really close to the 1080 but it, now it's gone into the pack, it's kind of mixed things up a little bit and I, I actually think it's pretty damn cool. But anyway... Um, one thing I can say is um, for anyone that is interested, I have actually tested the two MSI GTX uh, 1080s in SLI already. All of the results and everything are done and I'm hoping to have that up for you all early next week. So for the regulars out there, keep your eyes peeled Monday stroke Tuesday, depending on uh, how bad I'm feeling after the uh, Isle of Wight festival and I will be back. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. Ding!